Welcome to the Society for Pediatric Pain Medicine Visual Pearl Series. Today, we will be discussing abdominal wall pain from slip trip syndrome and the diagnostic tool of dynamic ultrasound. Today, we will learn about slipping rib syndrome by the presentation of a compelling case, discuss its incidence and symptoms in the general population, identify those at risk, review diagnostic criteria and confirmation methods, explore treatment strategies from conservative to interventional, and explain surgical and post-surgical management options. A 16-year-old female with chronic abdominal pain. Despite thorough gastroenterology investigations, the cause remains elusive. Her pain is constant, worsened by movement, and accompanied by nausea and vomiting. On further history and physical exam, the patient notes frequent clicking sensations at the edges of her ribs that lead to intense aching in the midline of their abdomen. A bedside ultrasound was used to look for causes of pain in the side of the chest and abdomen. Upon imaging at the costal margin, it is noted that the ninth rib is sliding underneath the eighth rib with respirations. A push maneuver is applied to the ninth rib, demonstrating rib overlap again. This causes discomfort in the patient. Bilateral intercostal nerve blocks at ribs 7 to 10 are performed in clinic. The patient reports near complete resolution of pain. Slipping rib syndrome, SRS, a frequently overlooked source of abdominal and chest wall discomfort in clinical practice. Studies suggest that SRS may be responsible for up to 5% of musculoskeletal chest pain cases encountered in primary care settings. This statistic underscores the importance of considering SRS in the differential diagnosis of patients presenting with such symptoms. Slipping rib syndrome usually targets the front part of the ribs, specifically the false ribs, which are usually ribs 8 to 10. Let's delve into the mechanisms underlying slipping rib syndrome, SRS. Certain predisposing factors can cause abnormal costochondral cartilage, resulting in excessive laxity or tearing of these tissues. SRS occurs when one of the false ribs slips underneath the superior cartilage, leading to pain due to excessive ligamentous stretching and impingement of intercostal nerves. It is essential to consider and rule out other potential causes of pain. There are several risk factors for slipping rib syndrome. When it comes to slipping rib syndrome, patients commonly report intermittent lower chest or upper abdominal pain. They often describe a popping or clicking sensation in the affected area. This discomfort may extend into the chest or back, with patients often describing a combination of somatic, visceral, and neuropathic elements to the pain. Factors that can trigger slipping rib syndrome may include sudden movements like coughing, sneezing, or even rolling over in bed, as well as participation in certain sports activities. Patients often find relief from the pain by stretching the affected side, applying pressure to the affected area, or lying down in a supine position. The hooking maneuver, a valuable physical examination technique utilized in diagnosing slipping rib syndrome. During this test, the practitioner palpates beneath the costal margin and gently pulls the rib anteriorly and superiorly. A positive result is indicated by the reproduction of pain or the detection of a distinctive click or pop sensation within the cartilage. Dynamic ultrasound is a promising diagnostic tool for identifying slipping rib syndrome SRC. In this procedure, the ultrasound probe is placed over the ribs while the patient performs movements that elicit pain, such as abdominal flexion or coughing. A positive result is indicated by the visualization of rib subluxation on the ultrasound. Research by Ventes et al. showcased the efficacy of dynamic ultrasound, achieving a correct diagnosis of SRS in 89% of cases. A combination approach can also be taken whereby the practitioner performs the hooking maneuver while visualizing with ultrasound. This combined approach may have a higher sensitivity, 87%, compared to coughing, 54%, or abdominal crunches, 13%. In treating slipping rib syndrome, SRS, initial conservative methods like acetaminophen, NSAIDs, and physical therapy are recommended. Comorbid depression may require attention due to prolonged disability. If initial treatments fail, 
intercostal nerve blocks with or without steroids can be considered, although recurrence is common, often necessitating multiple treatments. The definitive treatment for slipping rib syndrome is cartilaginous rib excision, where typically two to three levels of rib cartilage are removed while preserving the neurovascular bundle. In cases of hypermobile ribs, some advocate for stabilization with a bioabsorbable vertical rib plate to potentially reduce recurrence. Here are some references for a deeper understanding of slipping rib syndrome. Contributors include the following physicians. Rita Ogawol, Alison Farron, Alexandra Klein, Andrew Dunn, Caroline. We thank you again for your time spent with us on behalf of the Society for Pediatric Pain Medicine Visual Pearl Series.